So here we're going to be looking at trade in an Edgeworth box. And this is from my microeconomics textbook. And I'm Richard Friedberg. So we're going to be looking at a specific example. Um, there are two individuals uh, that are possibly trading uh, two goods. Okay. So we're uh, going to be calling these individuals. We have a person called Blue. Uh, and we have a person called red, okay? Uh, there are two goods, uh, food and drinks. So simple, simple economy. Um, and um, let's do this in black. So assume that blue has two units of drinks and eight units of food, okay? So two cans of soda, eight uh, whatever uh, bags of uh, chips. Uh, red has six units of drinks and four units of food. Okay, so these are what we call initial endowments. That's just what they've been given uh, from um, uh, you know, the benevolent social planner, uh, Richard. Uh, and we're going to be looking at, you know, should these, if these people are allowed to trade, will they trade? How long will they trade? And can we say something about that uh, allocation uh, if if the if it is better and if so uh, why at at a slightly deeper level okay so uh, let's um, let's start with drawing we say that we want to illustrate these um, these um, endowments so start with the um, blue. And think of um, two axes where we're measuring number of drinks that blue has uh, on the vertical axis and the number of or how much food blue has on the horizontal axis. Okay, so blue has eight units of food and two units of Rings. Okay, so this is may or may not be uh, to scale, but uh, you, you get the point. Okay, so we have 2D, 8F here. Okay, so that's one person. Um, we're going to be looking at if they are willing to trade and if they're better off or worse off as a result of, of that trade. Uh, we do have a tool for saying if someone is better or worse off uh, or the same. And this is, of course, uh, indifference curves. So let's draw um, an indifference curve for blue that is um, passing through her initial endowment. Okay, And as usual with indifference curves, points further from the origin are associated with higher utility. Okay, so that's one person. Um, what about the other person? What about red here? So in principle, we could be drawing uh, uh, the equivalent um, figure or graph here with drinks for red on the vertical axis, drinks for food um, or uh, red's food on the, on the horizontal axis, uh, etc. We could also, in a trick associated with uh, Francis Edgeworth uh, from more than 100 years ago, say that we take such a, a graph and flip it over and superimpose it here. Okay, so think that we're putting red. Let's see. Let's do that with slightly uh, straighter lines. We're measuring the situation for red from uh, the opposite side. Okay, so for red, we have the origin for red is up in this corner. She's measuring drinks also on the vertical axis, but going down, measuring food also on the horizontal axis but moving from right to left, okay? So if red has uh, six drinks, uh, 
like this, and 4f That's her initial allocation, okay? We can, uh, just as in the case of, of blue, we can let um, depict um, a difference curve that passes through uh, the initial endowment here. So this is a difference curve for red. And for red's point, indifference curves that are further from her origin are associated with high utility. Whereas points along the indifference curve, she is well, indeed different between them. Okay. So a uh, couple of things to note. So one is that in this economy, uh, all the goods are owned somewhere. So if we're saying that you know, this is the, the amount of goods or initial allocation for, for blue, that's also saying what the initial allocation is for red. What's not owned by or owned by blue in this economy is, is owned by red. Okay, we're now going to be looking at so call this uh, uh, initial allocation for um, O, as in original, uh, not as in zero. Um, let's look at an, you know a trade. Say that um, blue is exchanging food for for drinks, uh, and vice versa. You know, red is getting away, getting rid of some drinks and getting more food. So say that they're changing to a point like N. And the question is, is such a trade beneficial? Would they gain from this? Is trade good in this setting, given their um, indifference curve, as, or given their preferences as described by the indifference curves? Uh, yes. So here we can use the indifference curves um, to say something about this. So clearly, for moving from O to N here, what happens for blue? Well, blue is coming up on a higher indifference curve. So blue is better off. What about red? Well, red as well is coming up on a higher indifference curve from her perspective, okay? So both of them uh, found this move to be um, to be a to be a good one that increased uh, utility. Okay. Okay. When we uh, evaluate efficiency in in this kind of setting um, in general equilibrium, we use uh, the concept of Pareto efficiency as as uh, described in in uh, in the book. So we're saying that an allocation is Pareto efficient if there's no way through which we can make someone better off without making someone worse off. Okay. And, that's sort of a seems like a quite weird concept in some sense, um, but it's it's uh, as we'll see it's, it's it's quite useful and quite intuitive once we start using it. So if we're thinking of comparing or looking at the original uh, allocation O here, we say is this Pareto efficient? Um, no, there was a way moving from O to N where we could make both individuals here better off. Okay, so in that sense, O clearly wasn't efficient. There was you know, money lying on the sidewalk. There were mutual gains from trade here that could be realized as it went from zero to N. Both parties could be better off clearly than zero or original uh, position here was not, was, not, um, was not Pareto efficient. N, uh, is that Pareto efficient? No, we have in the whole lens here in between, are points where we similarly could find allocations where uh, both parties were, were better off. Okay, so we sometimes say that there are possible Pareto improvements here. But say that we move to a point like um, uh, A here. That's on this on this curve, and let's draw a blue indifference curve. That's just tangent to that. So this is a point of, of tangency. Then we can ask, is there some way through which we can make one party uh, better off without making uh, the other one worse off? Uh, and the answer is no. 
okay, the, the two indifference curves are just tangent, there's no way through which we can move one individual up to a higher indifference curve without lowering the indifference curve for, for the others, for the other. Okay, so there are a number of different ways to describe uh, such an allocation. So a point like A or an allocation like A here is described by what? We can say that, well, it's Pareto efficient. As we just explained. Uh, we could somewhat loosely say that the parties are done um, trading. Okay, you know, red one might might want more of both, and blue might want more of both. Uh, but there, there's no more scope for mutually beneficial trades. Okay, so we're looking here at voluntary trade. We're not looking at blue taking stuff from red or vice versa. We're looking at trades that they're voluntarily engaging in, and at some point, you know, their preferences and 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 uh, endowments after the trade are such that. You know, uh, they're happy. Um, uh, they can't improve on that uh, by mutually agreeing on something else. And finally, we could also note somewhat more deeply that, um, you know, what is the slope of the indifference curves? Well, that's, you know, how much, if we're stepping in the, in the shoes of blue here, um, how is blue willing to trade off drinks to food and still be equally well off. The slope of the indifference curve, the marginal rate of substitution we wish, or uh, turning to blue here, the marginal utility, so the slope of the indifference curve, the marginal utility of food over the marginal utility of drinks for blue is equal to the marginal utility for food over the modern utility of drinks for red, okay? So uh, they both value these two goods equally at the margin, okay? It's another way of, of saying that they're, um, that they're done trading. So, you know, at, at a point like O here, um, so blue had relatively much food, had relatively low marginal utility of food uh, relative to drinks sitting there, very full, uh, but kind of thirsty. Uh, vice versa for for red, which had um, um, you know a relatively um, high margin utility of food relative to the margin utility of of, uh, of of drinks. So she was hungry, uh, and there was scope for a mutually beneficial trade here. Okay, so these are three ways to characterize a point like A, and uh, importantly, there will be very many points like A throughout here, any point of tangency, and we can connect those by something that we call a contract curve.